What's up guys? Happy holidays! Holidays are until the last day of January, right? Today we're gonna talk about... What is that? That for me? No, you shouldn't have. No, oh thanks. All right, thanks for the gift. A gift from me to me. <laughs> Let's unbox this quickly. So we have the power adapter, power cable, which is a standard power cable for computers, two network cables, and of course, the box. And just so everyone has the same foundation, where the hell is that? We're gonna insert some hard drives here. There are two network connections here and we're gonna put that into a network. I already actually have a video about that, how to back up your stuff and everything. And that's one of the solution when you have a lot of data. Often people will back up their stuff with a hard drive connected with a USB or Thunderbolt cable. But in my case, I have way too much data. And since I've started to make videos, I have even more data. <laughs> a lot of people will also back up, for example, to the cloud. If you don't have a lot of data and those prices are acceptable for you, for example, Dropbox, OneDrive, uh, Google, Apple has also some uh, storage. I don't know if you can connect Apple though with some enterprise solutions because I'm gonna talk about home user and companies. They have all of it. So you can start small with a two bay. This wasn't a, is a four bay. And you can go until there's like that, that length of base. <laughs> but what else can you do? Okay, we have network drives, that's fine. What else? Well, in this case, and I'm gonna talk mostly about this one, the generation before, which was released in 2017. This one was actually released in 2020. And the newer model of this exact same model number series uh, just released this year, a month ago or not, or something like that. There are a few key differences, and we're gonna talk about those later on but they do have all a processor some memory you can upgrade the memory up to a certain official and unofficial limit and of course network ethernet times two one gigabit per second though and there's a SATA port so you can connect an extension unit which you can add even more drives and that's another solution from Synology and under here you can add drive that are NVMe.2 right here one for writing, one for reading cache, and it's mostly useful if you have little files. So what about Synology versus the other brands? My old one, who is more than, I think it's 10 years old, it still receives uh, security updates. So yeah, that's a commitment from Synology and that's fine with me. You'll pay a little bit more for all the software that there is in there and there is a lot. What can you do? Well, obviously you can use it as a file server. So I have a client, for example, that use a two bay and he actually use it as a mini server for file server and that's about it. But before that he had a Netgear NAS and oh boy, that was uh, really weird. The interface was so wrong. So I'm gonna put a little list here of what you can do with Synology, right? And I'm gonna enumerate a few. So obviously you can use it on a file server, backup server, you can back up your Linux, Mac and Windows machines on that with a client. I personally use another software that backups on network drives, which is fine. If you have a Mac, you can even use this as a backup time machine. There is also the surveillance station. If you have some IP cameras, you can connect them. This particular model would have two licenses for two cameras and you can just add cameras if you have more and add some licenses. You can also have an office suite inside there and you have your own little cloud. You could have an, another machine just like that, another place and at another company and sync data between them. So if there's a crash or something, I had a client had some ransomware, I just took the backup and restore the files and it's gone. <laughs> and you can run virtual machines on there. You can have the Docker engine, so that expands the possibilities timefold. And of course, a Plex server. A lot of people buy this only for a Plex server. And you can actually sync your data to Dropbox, OneDrive, I think also. So you set it up and it's just automatic. That's a lot of maturity in all the software they have. In the Synology verse, there is a lot of apps, over a hundred apps included. Just go in the package manager and then it's click install and obviously that's why I'm replacing my older one because I can't upgrade the other one <laughs> and this one can be upgraded which I will do. This model and the other one use an Intel Celeron and these have actually 
some uh, a little feature that the newer one does not have. So the newer processor is an AMD 1600, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. And doesn't have any codec engines in it. And this is mostly for Plex servers. So when you're streaming your media, so you're listening to a movie, you're streaming that to your phone, to your computer, to your Xbox, whatever you're streaming it to, it will connect to the client, look if the client can decode the file itself, but if it can't, it's going to be this processor which will decode and then stream the decode option for the device to be able to read it and show it on your display. So this processor will work his ass off. <laughs> but what happens if you use some specific format, for example, H.265, so you're gonna save space here on those drives, but at the same time, you'll have to decode them or the other machine's gonna have to decode it. So if it's this one, so this model, the one before, it's gonna decode it just like that with QuickSync, and I'm gonna list whatever it's gonna be decoding here. And basically it's 4K, H.265 mostly. And yeah, that's one gotcha for the newer model. As for the memory, with the newer one, you'll actually have some ECC memory. So if data protection is extremely important for you, go for the ECC memory, which is only in the newer one. On this one, you have four included and you can add some memory after if you want to. They recommend only the official Synology memory up to eight gigabyte. And that's what Intel is actually saying for its chips, right? They, they do a series of tests and at the time of the release of the processor, they say, hey, we tested that, all of that works and we have our 2000 tests that we do, for example, and they all work with eight gigabyte of memory. Time passes and more capacity memory, right? This is a 16, so 16 gigabyte. So more memory kind of develop itself with the years and now we can go higher, but Intel won't take an old processor and retest with newer memory. So that's why unofficially you can go up to 32 with this one. With the newer one, you can go up to 32 officially and up to 64 unofficially, same thing. What about the LAN port? This is where the newer one shines. So you have two one gigabits per second ports, but there's actually a new hole here that you can unscrew and add a module with 10 gigabit, which is very useful, for example, if you're doing video editing directly on that. Also on the newer one, and this is only in beta, so you'll have to maybe wait a little bit if you're undecided which one to buy. You can actually use on the newer one, the two bays here, NVMe.2, for making a storage pool. Because in this model, you can only use those for read and write cache. So one for read, one for writing. But right now it's only in beta, only working with Synology NVMe.2 drives. So you will pay those drives. So let's add the drives slowly but surely and the memory which I see here because those lights are blinding me haha <laughs> if you add some memory that are not officially from Synology do validate either with the community to see if it's going to be compatible Synology themselves might say that there's only one type of memory that works there's there is a compatibility list for cameras there's some compatibility list with the drives so there's everything right so this is in place the drive bays are actually the uh, screw less. The only thing is that they actually give you screws for the hard drives, which is kind of weird, maybe under, but then there's no holes. They don't fit. <laughs> Explain yourself, Synology. No problem. So I'm adding two terabyte, two 18 terabyte disks for now. Voila. And all three models, by the way, have the uh, Synology DSM. So that's the Synology software that runs on these machines. Uh, version seven, which is a newer one, which I couldn't install on my old one. Since my older drive, uh, NAS drive is a one core thing, uh, it's gonna fumble through. <laughs> it's actually already pretty slow when I connect to it. Not for backup, but when I connect to the interface, it's so slow. <laughs> so that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you liked this content on newer technology and which one you should buy or not. Hopefully that was clear enough. If it's not clear enough, just ask some questions in the comments and I'm gonna try to help you guys. And obviously there are other videos of uh, these NASs 
everywhere on the planet and voila i'm gonna boot that up and copy some files because i'll be able to sync that with my older one almost like that there's an app for that <laughs> on that note guys take care and see you in the next video